Hi, I'm Trisha from Inspiration Laboratories, and this is our Science at Home Hangout series. And today we're talking about kitchen chemistry. So really easy, simple science experiments that you can do at home just with stuff in your kitchen. And chemistry is all about um, looking at reactions or looking at different types of materials and how they respond to things. Today I have a simple little chemistry one with different white powders from the kitchen. So I have cornstarch, flour, and baking soda. And so you can add water to each of them and compare how they feel and how they respond. So this one I've already added water to with cornstarch. And as you do this with your kids, all different ages, you can talk about the observations you see. So with the cornstarch, the cornstarch and water, you can make it to a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Um, as long as you are touching it, it acts like a solid. And then when you let it go, it acts like a liquid. Mine's kind of dried up just a little bit. Add just a touch more water and it'll work a little bit better. And so, I mean, for older kids, middle school and high school, you can talk about viscosity and non-Newtonian fluids. But for little kids, really just talk about what's happening with the process here. What, what's, what, that how sometimes it's a solid and sometimes it's a liquid based on how much pressure or how they're touching it so solid when you touch it liquid when you let it go so that one's always super fun sensory play along with the science and then in the middle I have some flour here and same thing you can do flour of course is a good base for play-doh so you'll end up getting some kind of play-doh consistency again depending on how much water they throw in so just a fun one to mix up and compare that it's different get more of a play-doh feel. It doesn't act like a liquid when you let it go. So, a little bit of a play-doh there. Same with the baking soda. If you add just a little bit of water, you'll end up kind of with a play-doh feel. But of course, some extra special things that you can do with the baking soda then after you get a nice little, you don't dissolve it, like I think about it a little bit too much, but you add a little bit more powder. Of course you can always add some of your vinegar and then you can add vinegar to all three of them and see what happens there. And of course you'll just get your bubbles with your baking soda. And that's always of course a big hit. And there's a ton of different baking soda and vinegar things you can do, adding different things to it to see how it changes the reaction adding soap or adding different flour, mix all three together and see what happens. It's really pretty endless what you can do with just mixing things in your kitchen. And side note, if it's edible, it's probably okay to mix and be safe together. Lemon juice, different fruit juices, a lot of those will react with your baking soda as well. Um, just if it's edible, like if you would use it in cooking and baking and whatnot, they're safe to mix. But of course, don't use your cleaning products and all those other things. Those are not always cool to mix together. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Anthea and she's going to tell us what she's got. Hi, um, well, we've been playing with lemons at home, um, various things, but one of the things we've done is we've, I'll move this down so you can see them, we've been linking them up, linking up lemon cells to make a battery um, and what we've done is we have taken um, things that are powered by normal little kind of double A, triple A batteries. So this is a set of fairy lights. And we also used a calculator. And we've stripped out the uh, the batteries, connected some wires so that we can see how many lemons it takes to um, to light up various objects. Um, so we've been, you need to have some copper. We found that, I, I always keep all little bits so copper wire actually from the house is best to use if you can kind of strip that out because copper nails are quite difficult to get and then some um, DIY galvanized zinc nails and you can kind of link them up link all the cells up attach them to your where your batteries would go and then you can switch it on now I'm going to see if you can see this so we managed to get four this is one we did earlier oh I can never do this there we go live on air there's my fairy lights now I need to find the, oh, can't connect it here, there we go, did that come on? There we are, so that's, we managed to find four cells lit the um, the fairy lights up. When we did it with the calculator, it's a solar powered one, so we know that it's not going to take that much. 
it doesn't require that much juice to light up and we found that two worked but if we did more than two it was actually too much and the um, the LCD display actually started flickering and overloading which was interesting as well um, but if you use your um, calculator most have got a solar panel so you need to stick some kind of gaffer tape over the top of them and then the other thing that we've been having great fun with um, is using lemon juice to make invisible ink so here okay so this is this is what you get when you heat up when you use lemon juice it dries clear and when you heat it up it oxidizes and turns brown so this is pure lemon juice I haven't diluted it and this bottom one which I'm not sure if you'll see it's very faint is um, pretty much I would say 90% water and 10% juice so what you can do is you can kind of mix and um, dilute the lemon juice and see how strong the brown oxidized mark is that you can get and you can also I've been reading up which I didn't know I've got my little list use lots of other um, kitchen um, things to make invisible ink so I've got here honey which I didn't know about I knew about milk onion juice vinegar wine so we're actually tomorrow going to be playing with um, how many other things we can make invisible ink out of and I'm now going to pass on to Keris hi I'm going to talk about the simple egg now an egg is quite interesting first our, um, we've been hard boiling our eggs and for my toddlers it's perfect to show the difference between a liquid and then to a solid state uh, we've done the same with water um, but instead of going freezing when you heat up the egg it of course turns into a solid state as in a hard boiled egg um, with older children at the same time you can also talk about how it's due to the denaturing of the proteins and splitting them up and they denature and uh, the bonds break and that's what changes it from a liquid to a solid state the same way that you can do is with making meringues so it's real kitchen science and cooking as well and there by adding the um, whisking up the egg you're adding air into the mix and the protein bonds um, separate and the water loving the hydro uh, hydrophonic um, proteins they move and they um, the air bubbles change the substance and it forms the white and then you can bake it into meringue the last thing that we've been doing with the eggs is using it as a emulsifier and that's when um, we've been looking at how oil and water don't mix um, and then adding egg yolk into it to make it mixed together and we've done a simple experiment making mayonnaise as well so it's quite interesting just a simple little egg and the different things that you can do with it I happen to know that Anthea and Science Sparks have also got some great egg experiments at the moment a bit different than our ones okay I'm passing over to Maggie <clears throat> Hiya, I'm Maggie from Red Dead Art and Life at the Zoo. Um, really great to be here at the Science Hangout again. I did, um, again, the children's favourite, the, I'm going to lift it up, the sugar crystal solution. Um, this is basically all about uh, looking at how water absorbs um, other materials, in this case sugar, and also what happens um, you know, once you have got a sugar solution, how crystals form off the back of it. So basically, um, when you have water, it can absorb other materials, but um, it can absorb it better at temperature. For so, for example, we took some sugar, we put it in a in a pan with water, stirring it, nothing much happened. You could still see all the crystals, so it hadn't been absorbed. So we heated it up, kept stirring, stirring, not much happened. Heated it up some more, and as the water started to boil, um, the, the solution started to become clearer and, and look like um, like this, you know, if you ignore, ignore the stick in the middle. So it's kind of showing that um, as you heat it up, it's, the water is able to take on more, more of the solution. If you then let it cool down again um, and put a stick or something else inside it, uh, you can see that as the water cools down, its ability to absorb is reduced. So the sort of sugar crystals are kind of pushed out again and crystals form 
um, along different objects. So we've, we've actually got it on the, on the line in the middle, but also you can see at the bottom it's started to form and there's also like a little crust at the top. And then as more and more water evaporates, so two things are going on, the water is evaporating, so the concentration gets denser, more crystals form. Um, and you can see sort of the natural state of the sugar and the sort of the shape it has. Clearly the kids are very excited about this because they're looking forward to eating it. Um, and my son regularly updates me which one he'll eat. So, um, and if you can see that the, the, the white one has the most, whereas the green one, which we did last, hasn't got very many crystals yet, so apparently this one's mine. Um, so a bit of fun and a, and a little treat at the end. I'm hoping it'll look pretty, and if it does, it'll make a nice little gift as well, you know, for, for Christmas on the, on the side or, or a little birthday gift. So just a bit of, of fun. And that, that's me. So I'm going to pass over to Trisha again. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Um, Again, Science at Home Hangouts, we love sharing the ideas with you. We hope that you are encouraged to do some of these ideas or other kitchen chemistry ideas with your little ones at home. Uh, we'd love to see and hear from you what you're doing. And so share with us, um, leave comments, post, Facebook, Google+, YouTube video, wherever. Just tell us what you're doing. We'd love to see it. So thanks so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye.